Hey, are you Nina's mom? No, I'm Jamar's mom. Oh, dang it. What? Why? Is Jamar doing okay? Is he falling behind? Oh, no, 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 no. He's perfect. Um, why don't you take a look at the art wall, and I'll be with you in a second. Have a cookie. They're homemade from the grocery store. Welcome back to Restorative Justice Reflections. I'm David Ryan Barcega Castro Harris, all five names for all the ancestors. And today I'm here with Martin Urbach to dive deep into the restorative themes, or lack thereof, found in season one, episode 10 of ABC's Abbott Elementary open house. As always, our conversation here is not a critique of the story or production choices of the creators, but will highlight how restorative justice could apply to situations like building and strengthening relationships between teachers and student caregivers and within your own family. Hopefully, this will give you some insight about how to apply restorative ways of being into your life in and out of the classroom. If you want to take a deeper look at applying restorative justice to your life, join our inner circle community to connect with RJ-minded individuals and get bonus content deepen your practice by checking out our courses. And if you want to see this work in your school or organization, invite us for coaching or training on implementing this work. Of course, the links to everything down below. Now let's get to it. Martin, thank you so much for being here. Tell the people about yourself. Hey, y'all. Peace and blessings to everybody. It's such a honor to be here. Uh, my name is Martin, Martin Urbach. I am a white Latino immigrant. I'm a drummer. I'm a percussionist. I'm a composer. I'm an educator. I'm a restorative justice coordinator. I'm a youth organizer. I'm a connoisseur of good and bougie coffee and also good and bougie ramen. And yeah, I work with youth uh, many, many, many hours a day and I love it. And I'm living a blessed life. Um, you're organizing youth and doing playing music with youth. Beautiful. So that's me. Oftentimes in the context of schools, which, you know, isn't a requirement for people to be on this podcast to talk about what's going on, but it is helpful. I know you've just recently started watching Abbott Elementary. Um, what have been your impressions so far? Well, you know, I feel like I spent a long time uh, waiting for just to watch it. I've spent a long time people telling me, like, yo, you gotta, you gotta watch this. Let's go watch it together. Uh, and I literally just started watching it two weeks ago because I felt like I had the time. Um, uh, yeah, so I just watched episode 10 today. Uh, and to be honest, like, I I really love the show. I mean, obviously, uh, Quinta Brunson is a brilliant, brilliant TV maker, uh, actress, producer. Everybody in the show is incredible. So that's um, without without a doubt. Uh, one of the things that is, is a big, big, big um, theme for me is that Schools are complicated places. Schools are complex places. And the people that work in schools, we are just so different from one another. And I even sometimes think that schools are, are not real. Like, this place can't be real. Uh, I really love Janine's character because uh, she's a brand new teacher. Like, she's young. She has this ability to, to, to remind me why I started teaching. Like, I really, really, really love that idea of like, you're always trying to help and it's always like cool and you're always happy. And because to be honest, like teaching brings me to that place. Teaching and being around youth brings me to the place of like, man, there's nothing else I'd rather be doing. And, uh, and so that, that's a big, that's a big, um, huge theme for me to remind me, especially as like, I've been teaching for 17 years. Uh, you know, speaking to, you know, those 17 years you've been in the game, like, you know, and you seeing this young energy, I'm curious if you could take us back to the beginning of your education journey, because, um, you know, yours is not the typical route that many people take. Um, I'm curious why you decided that education was the thing for you. I'm curious, like, what was it about making you decide that education was for you? You know, I think that um, I just always resonated with education but i remember me being in the fifth grade and going to sit by the kindergarten wing in my elementary school and teaching kindergartners how to play the guitar informally or the recorder or singing i remember being in third grade and skipping my own classes to go um to the middle school music classes and like because i was taking uh lessons already being able to teach uh, and be like a ta right and so when I went to college uh, for jazz drumming, education was just 
it was just always there. There was opportunities to go in the community and do bucket brigade classes and uh, percussion ensembles. And so it, my life has always been like a pizza pie where sometimes like there's more slices made out of performing or composing or producing and teaching. And the more slices, uh, the more I tasted the slice of teaching to me, like my whole pizza pie became just like around education. Uh, and I still perform um, live and do shows and go on tour, but really I think that the more I've done education, the more I've wanted to do it. You mentioned like being attracted to teaching. Was there a teacher who was like really influential for you at a young age? Yeah, I mean, I've had so many different teachers that were that that were instrumental, right? Not to use that music uh, <laughs> music pun uh, to my development, but I would even say that who like saved my life. You know, like like my mama passed away when I was ten, and my community music teacher. Like he was like, he was not only just at the wake, but he was like, yo, little man, like, here's a set of drums. Let me teach you how to play the drums because I think that this is going to be really good for you. And he would come pick me up from the house because my dad really wasn't um, able to do it at that time. So folks who really showed up for me and who really like spent all that time and the care and the effort. And so in Latin America, I'm from Bolivia, but my teacher's from Argentina. So we would have mate which is like yerba mate together and he would make mate and we would just like play music together for hours right and so that kind of music making that kind of music education around built on relationship building and also built on care and also built on like this idea that like yo your life's hard like let me let me try let me at least try to help um has really been transformational for me. And, and I think it's really informed how I move as an educator, as an RJ practitioner. And so seeing uh, Janine always just trying to be like, yo, let me, let me just try to do this. And I'm exhausted or I not even really know what it is that I'm doing, but I'm going to just try. Like, I can't let this kind of go like that. Um, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And I think like so much of that, accompaniment right is um what is necessary for you know positive relationship building building trust you see this model in a couple ways in this episode modeled in particular right not necessarily between teachers and students but between uh adults outside of the classroom and you know what i love about abbott elementary is that not only are they taking time to you know show in a comedic way what happens in the context of a classroom with teachers and students, but that teachers are full complex people outside of that and have lots of different dynamics at play, which, you know, we all do. And so, you know, thinking about the ways that um, Janine interacts with Barb, the parents, um, and all different types of things in this episode um, are ripe for conversations. You know, you're Barbara's blood daughter and I'm her work daughter. Uh, her work daughter? Yep. Oh, God. Oh, no, no, no. You're not jealous, are you? Because you got all the perks. So many perks. Yeah. Shopping trips, boy talks, period talks. Those must have been moving. Wish I could have gotten one for my mom or even Barbara. So why don't we just take a look at some of the children's art? Yeah. A lot going on in this episode, and we're only going to focus on a small part of that, right? Um, listeners of this podcast know, like, I have a hard time having genuine conversations about Ava because, like, I have a hard time taking her seriously and, like, having real conversations or real restorative conversations about that. So we're going to leave that part of that to the side, really focusing on Janine, Barbara, Taylor, and uh, Nina's mom, uh, Janine's student's parent. Um, you know, we see a lot of people trying their best to connect um, and failing in so many ways. And, you know, we often talk about restorative justice as this building, strengthening, as well as repairing relationships rooted in equity and trust. And I think this episode does a really good job of showing like those various stages of that within the interactions between uh, Janine and Nina's mom, Taylor and Barbara, and then, you know, Janine and Barbara. Uh, what stood out for you? You know, one of the things that stood out for me the most, specifically, all right, so let, let's break this two different little situations down, right? Uh, the first situation between uh, Taylor and Barbara. 
Well, so what do you do, Taylor? I represent a global brand. We promote friendship and fun. She sells booze. I'm a rep for a high-end alcohol company. Oh, oh, I love high-end alcohol. I don't drink it, but I do love the commercials. The most interesting man in the world, he seems interesting to me. The spirit I recognize is the spirit of the Lord. Here we go again. I'm just saying. With your gifts, you could be helping people. You don't need to just say that, well, Mom. Well, I feel like I do. See, this is the kind of open dialogue that I'm hoping to have with this parent leader. Well, I'm sorry we can't all be St. Barbara. Right, like, as an educator, it, one of the most uncomfortable things that I usually, uh, usually have to do, especially as a restorative justice mediator, is to conflict resol do conflict resolution between a parent and their kid, mm. right? Or, like, I, I have done conflict resolution between two co-workers. I've never done it between a co-worker and their parent. Uh, but interpersonal conflict resolution is super hard to do. We all know that, right? But the thing that stood out for me was that Janine, I think in a way, like, yeah, she's, like, super pushy. You know, she's, like, really, like, she's like a ray of sunshine. Like, I am, you know, I am here and, like, love and light, everybody. Uh, she's gonna like you know make you accept that um, um, positive vibrations, uh, but she's really trying to help at every moment. Uh, she's like trying to like redirect conflict and peace make. Um, you know, like hey, like there's a, a tense situation. I think that um, one of the things that she was, uh, I think that when Barbara was when she asked like, oh Taylor, what do you do? And Taylor was like, oh I am a rep for a brand and then barbara said oh he sells booze uh, she immediately is like trying to like huh you know i don't consume it but it's she's like redirecting she's she's keeping a hundred right she's keeping it real she's not like bsing oh my gosh i love booze but she's trying to connect and redirect and so i i really connected with that aspect of it um and and also as soon as that scene ends the next scene starts with Janine just going and checking in with Barbara. Barbara? It's okay, Janine. Taylor and I have had that conversation many times. Oh. Well, I hope it works out. Because you can just see how much Janine really wants to that relationship to work, especially between her and Barbara, right? Between Janine and Barbara. Just going and closing the loop on like, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Like, how are you feeling? Um, which is a pretty restorative way of not just conflict. I don't think that conflict, like, I think we can agree that that kind of conflict is not going to get resolved in uh, one scene or a conversation. But I think that one cool thing about it was this idea of like just being human with each other and just like connecting. Um, and then also adding the the layers of like, Janine's a brand new teacher, super young. Barbara is a pretty seasoned teacher uh, who's been doing it for a long time. She's also an elder. Uh, there's also this thing of like, oh, I want, I want to be loved by you. And, Janine, and Barbara is also a little bit of like, leave me alone. But also, I love you too. Yeah, lots of different dynamics at play. If you're appreciating this video, like to help us in the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to, so you won't miss a video, and share it with someone to help us further amplify this work. Now back to the show. You know, for people who have watched the show, we'll get into why that might be a trauma response for Janine uh, later <laughs> uh, as the show progresses. Uh, I won't spoil anything for you um, because you haven't gotten there. But when I think about those needs to like, connect like it can also be coded as like people pleasing right just for the sake of like going along to get along and sometimes that's what's needed in order to like get a foot in the door to like continue a relationship like make one connection so you can like take it to the next level right like i don't think janine necessarily has aspirations to be like in deep personal relationship with taylor like in some ways like that's her competition we're competing for <laughs> barbara's attention love and care and of course like that's not actually what plays out in this episode but you know having connection with taylor often will in her eyes put barb in a place that is more likely to <laughs> give her like love care support that she needs like in that mother-daughter dynamic that she is going for again we don't need to get into like Janine's dynamic with her mother just yet because you haven't gotten there. But, you know, that's that's also present. 
when I also think about Janine as somebody who is always trying to connect, it's really interesting to see the way that like that manifests in her interactions with Nina's mom, this parent that she's been trying to connect with all year, but have just been disconnecting. And I think the way that this manifests, the, I think the way that this plays out um, in this episode is really common in schools, right? Parents aren't always responsive. Um, and the way that Janine navigates this might not be the way that we most restoratively would want to do things. But as you were watching this go on, the struggle go on, what came up for you? One of the things that came up for me is that like, we just, we just never know where, where people are at, you know, like we're trying to meet people where they're at and and also the reality is that we are also there, right? Like we are teachers and uh, or restorative justice practitioners, but that we're also human, right? We're also there. And seeing – that was the first time in the season, or for me, the first time that I've seen Janine not be like uh, positive, like a ray of sunshine, like in – you know, at all. Like I didn't know that she had it in her, right? Um, and then that reminded me like, oh – this like I have done that a million times. I have been that person in which I passed judgment or a parent or I got really upset or you know, I woke up extra early to go to school at seven thirty in the morning to meet with a parent because that's when they could meet and then they didn't show. And and so to me like that hit really that hit really hard because I I've been in a position of like I'm trying to connect with you, like I'm trying to help your child, I'm trying to help like help me help you. Um and immediately just make like a whole story in my head as to why this parent, like how much they're a bad parent or how much they don't care about their child or how much maybe I upset them. So they're avoiding me. So they're like, uh, you know, I start thinking all the ways in which like, you know, they're like blocking my phone number. So I actually call for my friend's phone. Um, and just really knowing like you never know, you never know where people are at. And although there might be some some families that are just like so overwhelmed with their children or with life that are like, you know what, I can't deal with this right now, so I'm not not gonna show up to a parent teacher conference or whatever. I I don't really ever want to be in a position in which I am making that I'm producing that moving my head. Like I would rather be wrong and be like, you know what, this parent can't come and there's a really great reason why they're not coming rather than be like oh they're just out there partying and they don't care about their child right when we're doing work around relationships i think sometimes it is often thrown around that, like assume good intent right and i don't think that's always helpful but in this case right when we know from a restorative justice lens that like in general, people want to be in good relationship. That doesn't mean that they want to be best friends, happy, hugging, sunshine, unicorn, rainbows with everybody. But in general, people do want to be in good relationship. And the reason that people aren't in good relationships often because they're trying to get another need met, right? In this case, the need for like continued employment and doing your job was the case for Nina's mom, right? Um, and- or like saving someone's life, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Sure. Like, we never know what's going on underneath the surface unless we take the time to do that. And again, like, sometimes your intuition is right and your assumptions about people um, are true and there is bad intent, but most of the times it's not, right? And we see this play out multiple times within the uh, dynamics of Abbott Elementary, these interactions with parents where, like, there's just misunderstanding or there are things that teachers are doing that is blocking connection, blocking communication. But um, there are lots of ways that as a teacher, as somebody who is working in a school, right, we can think about the ways that, one, we can be giving people the benefit of the doubt and think about other ways to communicate. And I'm not saying that Janine hasn't tried, and I'm not saying that Janine is, like, a bad teacher or, like, Janine is flawed just because she had, like, this one moment, right? But it's something that we want to be conscious of as we keep going um, and interacting with people in our day-to-day lives, out, even outside of the workplace. Yeah, I mean, I guess one of the things that I would say just to follow up to kind of what you're saying is that, like, are there going to be parents out there? Are there going to be – are there going to be times in which my intuition will be wrong? Are there going to be times in which, like, a parent is totally BSing me and they're at the bar as opposed to, like, coming to, like, meet with me or, you know, playing video games? Sure. 
And also, as a student of abolition, like, I think that the most apt people to take care of children is their parents. In most cases, obviously, in some cases, children are born into situations where parents should have no business having children. But in most cases, I think that, yeah, I want, I want to keep, I want to keep that one of the core assumptions of RJ, right? Like that people want to do good. People want to be good. I want to keep that hope alive. I don't often believe it. Like I don't actually believe that everybody wants to uh, be good all the time, but I want to live in a world in this abolitionist world in which that is a main truth of the world. Right. And to be honest, I think that you and I were talking a little while ago, like in production about this idea, like, you know, I think that so much around teaching and so much around being in school and so much around like that relationship building between families and teachers. I mean, it is a performance. Like schools are a perform. It, it is a place where I have to perform. Like one of my mentors, Dr. Chris Emden, talks a lot about like if you're following the lesson plan to a T, you're reading a script. You're an actor. You're not a teacher. And I super super agree with that. And also at the same time, like I think relationship building, especially in places like schools where like there is a transactional space there's i have to perform like there like i can't just be i can't wild out on a parent you know like i cannot be frustrated at a parent and just like call them out on it because right. it is it is my duty and also i'm paid by the state to serve a family and so it's actually my job to hold space um and not like the customer is always right or the parents always right but it is my duty to really hold the space and one of the cool things seeing that episode was that Janine was like, you don't have, you cannot be your best self all the time. Sometimes you're just literally your worst self. Or sometimes you're just tired or you also got, like in her case, right? Like she got triggered by her own experiences with her mom, right? And that shows up. Like I cannot leave those things at home. Like a lot of times people are like, oh, leave your things at the door. Like I can't. I, I'm a human being. And so I really appreciated seeing that as part of this character development, which is a very honest part of how a situation like that might go in school. And then, like, I don't know how, like, how far into it, like, seconds later in the scene, she takes accountability and she's like, yo, my bad. Like, this actually is not about you. Like, I'm, I'm going through something. Uh, let's start over. Which which is really hard to do, you know? It's yeah. like, for those of us who have had to do it, um, it's really uncomfortable and really had to be like, I am so sorry, I, I really was out of line. Like, let's, let me please start over. I really want this to go better. Again, really sorry for what I said. It wasn't about you, it was about me. I understand. Just had some experience with parents who aren't really there when their kids need them to be, but obviously that isn't you. Yeah, it's a really, really vulnerable thing. And both the admitting that you're wrong and explaining why and letting people into why, but like, it's such an important thing to acknowledge that like, hey, I am a human too, on the other side, yeah. trying to do my best for your student, your child, right? Like, yes, I play the role. I put on the performance as teacher, but I'm also a human who cares about this community, who cares about the well-being of children. And I need you to see me in my efforts in doing that. And yeah, I'm not always going to get it right. But what is the th way that we can do this together? Again, building, strengthening relationships, right? Janine came in, like, trying to go to repair first. Like, we have this problem. You haven't been here. Why haven't you X, Y, Z, right? Um, without, like, acknowledging the struggle, acknowledging what was going on for her. And so, like, even as we're thinking about, like, facilitating restorative processes, like, checking yourself is such an important part of that, right? What is the energy that you're carrying into that space? And what is the energy or, like, what are the things that are in your past that you're bringing into that space that, like, are yours and not having anything to do with the situation, right? It's a really important thing to acknowledge for to yourself and yeah. maybe sometimes like you might not be the right person to engage in that conversation i think in this case it was appropriate but i think it's also appropriate 
for Janine to have shared what she shared, especially after she made the mistakes that she made um, going off the on the parent uh, like she did. Yeah, 100%, right? Yeah, for sure. I think that that was a, an appropriate way. And also, I think it was a nice humanizing way. Uh, it was just a humanizing way of seeing how that experience could go. Uh, you know, I actually... I, before that, before watching the thing, the first couple of seconds when the parent arrived late, I was like, oh, no, I bet Janine's just going to be like, oh, this event went until 8. It's 8.30. I'm sorry, I can't see you, but let's book another time. I, I know things happen. Oh, my gosh, you're so great. You're like, you, you know, we're going to help your son out, your, your kid out. Let's, you know, let's do it tomorrow. Um, and there's and a so, version of that which is like admirable and saying like, "Hey, boundaries as a teacher, this was the thing. I'm going home. We can find another time. No hard feelings." But she doesn't know those yet because she's such a new teacher. Yeah. Like in the world of teaching, right? Like teacher education programs, uh, they the the messages that we as new teachers get are that like we are heroes and that like we are. Um, we have to, you know, prepare. Like after teaching, we stay in the school until 10 p.m. And then we don't drink, don't eat, just lesson plan, lesson plan, lesson plan. You, you know, it's like photosynthesis, but instead of like light, it's just like lesson plans, ink. Uh, and so one, yeah, it, it, it's going to be really interesting to me to see in the next seasons, like, right, like how that character develops as a teacher would develop, right? Like, yeah, because Janine has no boundaries. Like, there's sure. no boundaries. Uh, and I'm going to, like, raise my hand. Actually, let me raise my left hand. Um, uh, leftist activists in Latin America said that you always do it with your left hand because that's where your heart is. Uh, I'm going to say, like, you know, boundary setting is one of the hardest parts for me as an educator 17 years in. You know? Because, uh, yeah, like, I... Yeah, boundary setting. I think it's it's so it's so deep that that's a that's a theme that we can see at the very beginning. But I agree with you. Like, I want to see the the scene, the director's cut, in which is like, I'm going home. Uh, goodbye. This isn't about like critiquing production choices or story choices, but there are lots of ways that that situation could have been handled restoratively. And I think, you know, what she ends up doing is a right choice, but like that's not the only way that that <laughs> Correct, could have yeah. happened. Um, the other thing that, you know, is at play here is the dynamic that's going on between Barb and her daughter, right? Like her daughter decided that, like, hey, I'm going to go spend this time yes, it's on my work trip with my mom and her mom is not having it. Like, this is not good enough. This is, uh, this is just a side thing for you. You're not really messaged. And I don't even approve of mm -hmm. what you're doing for work. Um, as you were watching this dynamic play out, what came up as you were, uh, yeah. What came up for you? You know, I am, I am one of the lucky ones in which my mom died when I was young, but like, my dad really, really, really rocked with me. It was a really hard decision for him to allow me to be a musician as opposed to being a businessman, which is what he really wanted for me. Uh, hi, dad. My dad also passed away. I would have, I would have decimated like every single business because I'm a terrible businessman. So it's good that I didn't become a businessman. So I'm one of the lucky folks who like I didn't have that relationship in my own background, but I have seen so many love. Uh, people in my communities, uh, people in my like teaching communities and my friendships that have that relationship with their parents, right? Like, and I also, to be honest, I see that that relationship, that toxicity in relationship, happen between teachers and students, right? Where there's nothing that a student can do that is good enough to please you, right? Yeah. Um, there's nothing, and you know, not everybody, but most students really want to please their teachers. It's like most students, like they're like, yo, I like that's, that's been my experience. It's like kids, when kids like you, they want to learn. Uh, but in, in my own life, like I, I always wanted to please my elders, not in like a people pleaser way, 
but because you want to you want to make happy the people that love you and that you love right um and so that relationship was very complex to me it's a little foreign because i i can't identify myself but i can empathize with it and i've seen it uh play out in other spaces um i yeah i mean i just also think that there are parts of it because of my positionality that i can't understand you know like I am not like I'm not a very I'm Jewish, but I'm not a religious person. So I like I don't know what it might feel like to like have a parent that like really wants you to be down with the Lord, and that you end up working in booths. You know, like I am a white cis Latino. You know, I'm not a black woman, um, and so there are parts of it that 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 scene as I watched, I it's like I know what that is, right? And I see it. Um, and also, I see the complexities. Like, I don't want to pass judgment on it because I also know that, like, they're like the generations of before us. It's just it was a different time as well, right? Like, and so I I always want to be careful when discussing themes like that are across historical timelines, even if it's just like the la- the previous generation that like position those in the times in which that was happening you know i think that like for barbara you know i think maybe like growing up in the 70s um and maybe 60s like i think that was that that's just how things were i'm not saying they were right or wrong but so so, so societal wise like society wise like i you know i think that culture really that's just what it was so it's a really, um, I would say that it's, it's a, I, I'm sitting with those complexities of like, what it might feel like to want to have a daughter to be something. And then your daughter is something completely else and you have no way of affecting that. Yeah. And, you know, not necessarily asking you to put yourself in the shoes of like two black women, but think, even thinking about the dynamics of like building, strengthening, repairing relationships, right? Barbara and her daughter Taylor have like a strained relationship because of the seeming of lack of shared values and ways that they agree that like Taylor should be living her life. And that's if those values are something that you want to stand on to the point of cutting somebody out of your life or like ridiculing them or, you know, expressing displeasure for them not living up to those things like cool stand on those. And right. if you value the relationship above everything else, what are the things within the context of your relationship that you're willing to concede? What are the values that you are willing to, I wouldn't even say compromise, but like maybe tolerate from somebody else. Like you don't have to believe what I believe for me to love you, right? You don't have to mm-hmm. do the things that I want you to do in the world for me to love you, right? And I'm speaking as the parent of, you know, a very, very young one, but I'm also speaking as the uh, the son of parents who believe very different things about the world, right? And like, I know mm-hmm. within the context of our relationship, we don't see eye to eye about a lot of things in the world, but there there is love and acceptance from my parents and support from in a lot of different ways, similar to you. Uh, my parents maybe questioned some of the things that I did, but it was never like this disapproval or shaming for, um, you know, living my life, doing the work that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Whether this is a parent, child, student, teacher, or, you know, whoever it is in your life where we have these expectations of people that just aren't being met. Like, I think it's really important for us to think about what's more important, our value um, or the thing that we want to see happen in the world or the relationship with the person in front of us. And, you know, if it's the relationship, we got to meet people where they're at. Yeah. I guess hearing you say this, like, is really making me think about there, like, there's also layers, right? Especially between relations between like parents and and offspring, uh, uncles, aunts, like familiar relationships, like kinship. There's also layers, right? Like, one of the things that I appreciated is like Taylor and Barbara. They're still in relationship. It's a complicated relationship, full of rubs, right? Like, but they're still in relationship. Like, Taylor stills coming. Barbara is not like, no, you're not coming to my job. Like. Like, I'm not seeing you. If you don't spend three days with me, um, don't come. And there's so many folks who who don't have that, right? There's so many folks who have been either uh, had to cut off their families or their families have cut them off. 
you know, I, I have some family members that I don't rock with politically at all. And I have some of those in which, you know what, we can go and spend Passover together and be like, cool, nice hate, nice to see the kids, all good. But then I have some other family members that I really can't do that because their disagreements are either like de- denying or putting my or my loved people's um, safety in danger, right? Like, like James Baldwin says, like, they're like really like denying my humanity or my people's humanity. So I think that there's also layers, right? Uh, I think that unfortunately, and I think that that's just one of the truths of the world is that like sometimes conflicts don't have a resolution. There are some conflicts in the world that just like we have to sit with and we have to just learn to live with that pain. But one, one, the relationship with, between Barbara and Taylor gives me hope. I, I want to see kind of how it develops because it's a very common relationship rub to have, right? Um, and yeah, although their values don't seem to be aligning some things, they also have that connection and they're both, both open to keep exploring it or keep struggling together, right? Yeah. Like, Within the context of this relationship, this isn't about like the worthiness of human life um, or the validity of someone's personhood, right? It is about faith and like career choices, <laughs> um, yeah. And right, and you know, spend more time with your mom, <laughs> which like is something that is a little less difficult to navigate than you know may- maybe some of the like politically charged issues of of our day, which you know we're not going to get into right now. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, within the sure. context of you know, what most of us are navigating on the everyday, like we do have those relationships where there's not 100% alignment and, you know, the relationship is more important. We do have like some level of uh, foundation of relationship that's there. And the way to move forward is meeting people where they're at, even if it's not necessarily 100% where you are and, you know, hoping for continued connection hoping for a continued relationship so you can continue to build which you know in the case of this does happen but we won't get to that until future episodes um as we said there were lots of other things that were going on on this episode that we're not necessarily going to tie up but i did want to highlight um you know janine and barbara coming back together at the end Wait. <laughs> Maybe they won't be. i mean knows? i know but uh, great. have a good night and be safe all right yeah. okay i'll, I'll pick Well, looks like your work mom is free. How about dinner? Is this really happening? <laughs> okay, sorry. Play a goal, Janine. I would love that. <laughs> Come on. Okay. So, how did the conversation go with the parent? Oh, you know what? Surprisingly well. You know, Janine trying to... Uh, continue to get into Barb's good graces uh, as a mentee and surrogate daughter. Um, But, you know, as you saw them wrap up that part of the story, uh, what was in mind for you? So that actually was a part that really hit me the hardest. I don't want to speak for other people, but for me, I have had this happen to me and also I've seen it in different iterations in schooling where I have had either students or younger teachers really, 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 uh, I don't want to say like push themselves onto like a mentee relationship with me or with other people that I've seen. But I've also been that person who has like been, oh my gosh, like I really, the thing that I want the most in my life is to be loved by you and be mentored by you. Um, and, 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 and I've been lucky enough to have that relationship with students in which I'm a mentor, uh, and also with um, old coworkers and old educators in which like they mentor me. And, and I even, you know, think that my students mentor me, like we have a dual relationship, right? Like this mentorship. Uh, earlier, you and I were talking about like this idea of like, yeah, I mean, Janine is super pushy with like, please love me, please mentor me. I want to be your school mother, uh, your school daughter. I'm your school daughter. Um, and Barbara is sort of like, oh, like a cat, you know, like, come on. Uh, but having been like coming from a, a, a tradition of like uh, jazz musicians, like one of my old mentors, like a jazz drummer, he was the kind of person that 
he would do this like not mean things but like pretty harsh and pretty like no 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 like he put all these boundaries uh like if i didn't practice enough to his like liking he'd like send me home like five minutes into the lesson and i had to like walk for like an hour and 15 minutes because i didn't have a car um he'd be like come back when you practice again and then the next week i will come and he'll be like great you practice or whatever um and then we'd have like a three hour long lesson as opposed to an hour and so them coming back together where Janine, where uh, Barbara is like, say, let's go to, let's go to dinner. To me, is like, I read that as like, Barbara is into it. Barbara is into that mentorship relationship, even though like, I think for most of the time it's like, this is too much or like you're doing too much or, or, you know, putting all these like old school boundaries. Um, and yeah, so that was that was really a beautiful way of ending that episode, bringing closure. But also, it's I think it's a very real way. I you know I have seen that uh, play out. You know. Yeah, I mean, and this is a continuing, evolving relationship between the two of them, right. and you know, over the course of the rest of the season going on into next we see you know the way that barbara grows the way that like this actually does in some ways serve a need for barbara i think this does just speak to the like ever growing the evolving relationship that people have within the context of their relationships either with coworkers or people in their lives right um having connected on something that was vulnerable like this is a point of like hey we can we're on another level. We understand each other in a deeper way. And it just leads to more opportunities to connect um, and grow the relationship, right? While Barbara might not have the daughter of her dreams, um, Janine is feeling like some kind of need in that that area, like right? where she feels wanted. And I'm not putting a value judgment on that. Um, it's just, you know, people meeting each other where they're at in efforts to, again, build, strengthen, and repair when necessary relationships. Ooh, so much good in this episode. You've heard from us. Now we want to hear from you. Drop your restorative justice reflections in the comments. And if you want to join a live community conversation about our restorative justice lessons from Abbott Elementary, join us for a live event on Monday, July 31st. Link with more info in the description. Just want to get to some of the quick questions that everyone answers when they come on this podcast. If you were to be cast as a character on Abbott Elementary, what role would you want to play or who would you want to be at the school? Can it be a new character? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, it would just have to be a version of like Jack Black's like School of Rock. Like, I mean, uh, it would just have to be like a, we are go like, we're gonna tear it down. We're gonna go and you know, like, it'll have to be that, like, high energy, like, rock and roll, like, free improv, like, wild music teacher who's also just, like, a pocket full of snacks for everybody. Like, being like, yo, like, the class is a place to, like, really, like, like that, I think that one, um, yeah, it would just be, like, the, let's have, let's have fun all the time. Let's learn. Let's connect with each other. Uh, let's also, like, talk about some real things. I, I think that my character has already been written and I think Jack Black is it. Um, um, I can imagine a character like that playing well in Abbott Elementary. Um, you know, in the end of episode 10, we see we see um, Ava's uh, beat maker machine and DJ board. So, you know, it can get some more use. Fair enough, fair enough. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Martine, for being here. How can people support you and your work in the ways that you want to be supported? Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, ways in which I'd be contacted and supported. My website is martinurbach.com. Uh, I also facilitate a group of youth restorative justice practitioners and leaders, and we're called The Circle Keepers. You can reach us at thecirclekeepers.com. Our Instagrams are... Uh, at the Circle Keepers. My own Instagram is at Liberation Drums. And I have a link tree where you can get a lot of different resources. Uh, they, you can also donate to support youth programming in social justice and restorative justice. Uh, and that is link tree. I think it is linktr.ee slash Circle Keepers. 
beautiful and all that will be linked up again thank you so much for being on uh restorative justice reflections we'll be back very soon breaking down episode 11 of abbott elementary season one um can't wait until then take care